We've got a treat today. We've got the studio director from Media Molecule who has just launched Dreams. Siobhan Reddy is joining me from Guilford, England. And Siobhan, it is always a treat to have you on EP. Thank you for joining us. Oh, hello. Thank you so much for having me. I love coming on your show. Well, congratulations on launching the game. I know that this has been a years-long endeavor. And I also know that this was a staggered release because you had to kind of let the people in a bit. But how, yeah. are, how are you all feeling right now? I mean, it's really weird. Like, Dreams has been, you know, has sort of pushed us all out of our comfort zone all the way throughout development. And, you know, and early access was really new to us. And, you know, so, and then, like, launching after the early access is really new. So, yeah, people have been sort of asking us, like, the last week, like, you know, hey, do you feel done? And it's like, no, like, with Dreams, you never really feel done. You just feel like we've reached that next really big milestone. So it's been, like, amazing to get the new influx of Dreamers, seeing them sort of flood into the Dreamiverse and then all of the early access Dreamers helping them and giving advice, like, you know, you just sort of really get that feeling that the team has grown and the project has grown and... Yeah, it's hard to know exactly what to feel, but it feels good. When I first heard the name Dreams, I thought it was um, it was big. It was esoteric. It was uh, kind of wide open. And I mm. thought a little nebulous as well because mm. it's, it, you know, but as I started to learn more about the game, I thought, okay, well, that kind of encaptures what you're trying to do with this game. Now that I've played the game, it is the perfect name. And it, yeah, fe- right. it mm. feels more like you guys created a, an ecosystem than just a product. You guys created an entree into dreams. That's very cool. Like that, I mean, really the, like the aim of dreams was to be able to, um, you know, give people all the, the tools they need to be able to express themselves. And like my memory of the naming of dreams, and I'm sure everyone remembers this slightly differently, was that like we wanted to create a set of tools that would almost allow you to like create your dreams as fast as they kind of disappear from your mind. Mm. And as we know, dreams are very strange and weird. So, um, so yeah, like this sort of idea of fluid d- tools, flow state, expression, were all sort of really big um, kind of guiding principles for the tools themselves. But the thing that I love the most when I sit and play through the Dreamiverse is I really do get that feeling that I am playing and seeing works like artwork and games and music and little films that really do come from somewhere personal with from the audience, from the dreamers, you know, and like, you know, you've, they've got the whole spectrum of stuff in there and it just... I, I just find it incredible to just sit and kind of, you know, it's, I love going to art galleries. I love going to the theatre. And now I also just really love surfing the dream of us and kind of seeing what people are creating. Yeah, because for so long, obviously, I made the analogy that this is like a, an interactive YouTube. It's like a video game YouTube yeah. that you guys have created, mm-hmm. which congratulations, by the way, that's no small <laughs> task. You. But for so long, all we've been able to kind of enjoy from, you you know, the world's population is this linear video format. And now Mm. you've given them like really accessible tools to build interactive entertainment. And I'm wondering if that was your favorite as a studio, was that your favorite part of the Little Big Planet experience was sharing it and letting people and, and, and did that inspire this growth into much more? Yeah, 100 percent. Like, I think. Um, I think once you've made a community project, it's really hard to go back. Mm. And once you've made a community project that's all about creativity and people sharing in the joy of that, it's really hard to go back. And I think like Dreams, therefore, is almost like that on like steroids. You know, it's like every single tool you would need to be able to make a game. And like each of those tools themselves is a discipline. So if you're an animator, there's stuff for you. If you're just super into like logic gameplay, there's stuff for you. If there's there's music, there's something for you. And I think like when we stopped working on LBP, which of course we love and still love, part of the reason was that we had set a very tight and beautiful set of constraints for LBP. You know, the art style, all of it, the constraints were the beauty of it. And we really wanted to do something that didn't have those same constraints. It allowed the artist or the musician or the game maker to really get across what was in their head and so yeah like now when I look at it you know like you that that's what's happening and so to hear that sort of reflection back of like it's the YouTube of games like that is kind of I think what you know that was kind of what we were hoping would happen would be there'd be this like burst of you know hobbyist it's like public access tv it's like you know it's people who 
you know, you don't need to be a professional to like enjoy dreams. You can be just someone who wants to just have a go at like have a go at the craft that they love to enjoy in other ways. Yes. So it's a bit like, you know, I think for us it's like not every person who plays the guitar has to be a professional musician. You know, you can just do it because you're like, I just like noodling with like, you know, with logic or I just like noodling. I just want to make my little text adventure. So, yeah. So I think like I definitely feel when I like, you know, often what I do is I'll just choose a keyword like funny or surreal or one of the tags and, you know, newest, funniest, funny, and just see what's up there. And it's just like, it can be all, like all sorts of things. And I just love that. I love that, like, it's, you know, that there's, there's no, um, no telling what will be in the dream of us at from any given moment, which is great. So how do you onboard people into the experience? Because you've given, uh, you know, the end user a ton of flexibility and a lot of, uh, you know, tools that they can work with. But for those that are probably watching this still a little baffled by it, although it is a lot easier to explain now that people can actually get their hands on it. But Correct, it, yeah. How do you, you know, guide the player into this and encourage them to that expression? Well, we have a character called the Dream Queen, and the Dream Queen is basically the player's guide throughout the dream of us. And she basically, you know, she leads the player through, like, teaching the sort of first set of controls, and she very gently sort of starts to introduce the player to create, to more create mode uh, within the home space. Um, she's not really unlike the uh, uh, Stephen Fry character that was in uh, Little Big Planet, yep. but she's sort of a little bit more tutorial focused um, in the early on stages. And, you know, the onboarding has been something that we have spent quite like a, a bit of time trying to get right, because you're right, there's a lot in there. And when you mentioned it being an ecosystem, that's exactly how I think about it. Like, you don't have to do everything in dreams to enjoy dreams. Like, you can go into dreams and be someone that is a player who likes commenting and giving feedback to players. Like, you know, I love doing that. Like, on my Saturdays, that's basically what I do. I wake up, I surf through the dream of us. I mean, I'm a lover, so I'm, like, loving everything, <laughs> commenting on everything. Um, you know, I love that. Just really enjoy that, get a real kick from it. And then, you know, but then there'll be other people who'll be like, no, actually, I really want to dive into, you know, sculpting and I think for those people or for anyone who's into moving into create, we have a whole load of tutorials and the tutorials sort of, they fall into like three different categories. There is the sort of step through tutorials and we have a recommended tutorials playlist, which would be what I'd recommend. And then we have um, um, master classes, which are from molecules here, um, sort of talking through different aspects and we'll keep adding more of them. And then there's how to videos and those how to videos are like much more bite sized how to so it's like how to build a tree how to build a rock like that kind of thing and so we've tried to find there's lots of different ways to learn in dreams yeah. but because it's an open experience like everybody learns at a different pace everybody learns in a slightly different way some people like to jump between things other people like to dive into you know you know five hours of master classes we just, we have, we've sort of been, we've decided to treat it like, like a, you know, like almost like it's an open world game, you know, so you can really choose which of those you do in which order you want to do them. And then of course, there's like the amazing community who are like all helping each other on Twitter and on the Facebook groups and, um, you know, and have also set up websites that Lady Lex has set up this amazing website of all of the tutorials. And so there's all of that, you know, I feel like this, this iteration of it's been pretty good. I'm sure that we'll keep honing it along the way. Well, the analogy is pretty easy to make of uh, the early days of YouTube and, the, and the, mm -hmm. the, the home videos that people were putting together and having fun with the platform. And yeah. it feels a little bit like that when you're surfing through people's games, and so there's a lot of Iron Man copycats and <laughs> and Mickey Mouse fighting uh, Dragon Ball Z characters. It's a, it, interesting attempts, but then there's also some quite sophisticated work already. But it feels like it feels like the beginning of a, a perpetual content machine. It, you know, and the question that I have is like, could this in, be the last? like original thing that Media Molecule <laughs> starts to make and now do you just keep uh, making I mean, new, new content in dreams? I mean, we're committed to dreams in that, you know, I think for us, we want to keep adding to it. And like, we haven't yet 
come up with a uh, when someone has asked a question of can I do X in dreams or could I if you did a bit a little bit of code do X in dreams we haven't really come up with a no yet wow so I feel for us like there is a lot of scope to build upon it and like the, like you say like in the community there's already tons of original stuff where you look at it and think uh, particularly you know look at the audience who've been in early and for early access to announce there's some people who've been in and since the beta so people have been in for a year yeah like all those people people like their skill level is like amazing you know and they're the people that we're like okay right we need to help you build your community it's like and that's you know that's sort of the work that we are going to focus on next so it's like I think for us there's all this uh, yeah almost us as a studio sort of transitioning to sort of really do the features that the community need to almost build their own communities so it's like a very interesting time for us as we as it's now you know, seeing that, that, that happen. Yeah. I mean, you've built a platform, right? You've built something that, that rests right now on the PlayStation four and, and uh, Mm -hmm. you know, what a beautiful nurturing relationship you've built with Sony over the years to allow your dreams as a studio to kind of flourish like that. Uh, So in addition to launching media molecule is also always crafting new widgets and content as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So you guys are working on that. And then I would imagine that you're starting to reach out into the community are you bringing people into the studio are you starting to hire from the people yeah yeah we have already hired our first first uh, community member jamie breeze wow of llama quest fame so he's joined uh, abby's community team um and yeah we're doing bits and pieces with um community members already and i think that that will sort of continue you know like like it sort of did with little big planet so yeah and that's a really interesting relationship because you know it's uh it's it's just amazing and wonderful to meet our community and just always a joy to collaborate with them in any in any way that's fantastic now are you also going to be working with uh established game developers to help create a dream within dreams Oh, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe. That'd be telling. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine there is. I, I mean, it, that must be one of the things with a game like this is that there's so many different things that you can keep adding to it, but you don't want to get ahead of yourself. You've got to make yeah, every, every piece it, it, of it work. Yeah, I think for us, like, you know, we've all just sort of been talking about like you know we've got our plans in place for like the next six months and we're going to sort of make the roadmap sort of kind of figure out a way to make that roadmap more public and you know like we've you know you've always got to be careful with like the transparent development it's a sort of slightly terrifying concept Um, particularly when you are you know you've got all these different ideas and you and we want to also react to actually what's happening live so we're just giving ourselves a little bit of time to kind of you know bring in the new community and we have the roadmap sort of laid out and then from there we'll start sort of making the announcement of what comes next so i got home from vacation on um saturday night and then on Sunday, I, I wanted to check out the game. Mm-hmm. I, I spent like nine hours. Just, <laughs> like I turned it on and I, you know, yeah. you're just going from genre to genre, from taste it's to not, taste. No. It's like a little morsel of a platformer and here's a shooter. And it, it's an incredible, it's YouTube. You guys really mm-hmm. have created mm-hmm. the rabbit hole for video <laughs> games. Have you started to see a, the, the community kind of, you know, prefer a, a direction with the software? Like, are, are there things that are already... St- obviously, you had your awards where you you, uh, you gave some recognition to the early uh, um, creators out there. But I'm yeah. wondering if there... At the, in these early days, if there's the type types of games or genres of games that are really starting to blow you guys away. I mean, I think the thing that I've really liked is you see um, creators um, becoming names. Mm. So it's not so much like a genre or a, you know, because I think all the genres have been be, uh, are sort of being tackled by different people. But what you see is that people come in and they start really getting a name for themselves and being the person that does like cute logic things or weird, you know, Mr. Casey Jones with his opposite day games, like doing something that's kind of pretty surreal and funny and um, Sloan McKenzie with his style of gameplay. And like you get this, you, get, you start, I think that's the thing that, has been really cool and then there's this respect that kind of that they all have for each other and the way that the community all communicate with each other it's not that that was surprising it's just like you see that kind of happen they're very welcoming someone joins and publishes something you see lots of really nice encouraging comments on their first levels and 
you know, that sort of feeling, I, th I think, you know, it's, I'm on the outside of it because I'm with the creators, but it's like, I feel like it looks like it's a nice community to be a part of. Yeah. And so it's not necessarily that everybody gravitates towards one type of genre. It's more that they're kind of gravitating towards one type of feel and that being a feeling of welcoming and bigging each other up and positivity and helping, which is just like beautiful. Like it's so lovely to behold because you just sort of think, you know, because I think that then encourages people to do the weird stuff as well. You know, like yeah. there's people who... If it, if it wasn't, it doesn't feel like everyone's just like playing it safe and going, oh, we all have to do the same thing and we all have to use the media molecule kits and just make stuff with their stuff. People are like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to put, I'm going to make something on my own in this. You realize like people who play games, love games. So they're obviously going to make games in the image of the games they enjoy the most. Yeah. You know? So you see, really see that. And so it's, it kind of is a love letter to games in a way as well. You see this sort of real view of people kind of sort of putting across what they love about games and that's also really lovely well, which is which is fantastic and it feels like there's this ideal uh, of that collaborative spirit that sometimes we mm. as games get more corporatized and the business gets bigger and bigger we sometimes remove ourselves a bit from right like there mm -hmm. is this dream that developers have to work together to create art and that's what you've allowed people to kind of experience which is mm. pretty amazing. And, you know, I'm wondering how long the studio has been wanting to make this game. Uh, well, I mean, we've been working on it a while. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, it kind of is, it's the, st it is our sort of spiritual success at LBP, oh. really. Like, we couldn't have made dreams without having made LBP. Yeah. Like, that's for sure. Like, you know, LBP is a really important step along the journey. Certainly, you know, when I look at it now as to what it is, where it is it is what we pitched but what we pitched was like you know it it really took us like everyone in the company like really working very very hard to kind of realize that and to kind of push it as far as it needed to be pushed because you can imagine a version where you know you only go like three layers into the onion of dreams you know yeah, yeah. but actually to make it so that people truly can express themselves. You've got to go all the way in. In fact, the very first community of people outside of MM to try Dreams were the first party QA team in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And I always remember when they picked it up and then we started to see their creations and it was like, oh, wow. And they were doing exactly the kind of thing that we see in the community do where it's like some people making games, some people making sculptures, some people making music, some people making all of it. And I think that gave us a glimmer of, and some of it was like super polished and cool. Another was like really weird and fringy. And it was like, awesome. Like that's what we want. We want it to be this thing where there is this sort of breadth of content. That was like the first moment where I think the, we started to kind of get a sense of like this, where the collective design process was taking us and that it was okay. Are you guys, but even though it was hard some days, it was okay. Are you guys allowing people to kind of, uh, you know, program some randomization into level generation or, you know, if they want to, yeah? They're doing that already. People, yeah. have, people are doing that. Incredible. We, I didn't know they could do that, but they're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, ultimately, what would be, a, you know, a new dream for you? Would it, would it be for a, a creator to... Uh, build something that Sony says, wait a second, that's incredible. We want to publish that as a separate. Is that is that kind of? Yeah, a... I mean, we talk about that. Like, and I know Mark's talked about that a lot recently of like what that could look like. In, uh, and we love that kind of idea. I mean, some of these ideas were sort of tested out in LBP where we did actually have a sort of group of community members who'd made something for one of their versions of LBP. Um, but yeah, like we love that idea. I mean, I think it's like, it's really early to say almost like what the next dream is. It's like, for me, the next dream, the dream right now is to make sure that we just keep building our community, that our established community members are happy and that we get some of the features in for them that they really want so that, you know, they're feeling, you know, so that every, just so the ecosystem sort of is feeling all lovely. I want to see what my niece is going to do with it. Like, <laughs> you know, we're trying out some stuff with education. We've got quite a lot of balls in the air in a way. And there's, yeah, there's a lot of cool possibilities in the future. 
we could keep talking about dreams forever, but I, I consider this step one of our conversation, or, you know, after launch. Please do, um, you know, share my congratulations with everybody at Media Molecule and uh, uh, just my love for the team. And, and uh, oh, thank you. you know, honestly, you guys are really special and incredible as individual creators in the space. And, and uh, we're all better for the work that you do. So thank you very oh, much. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Okay. Continued success. Talk soon.